since um, it wouldn't be the Washington Post editorial board if I didn't. Uh, you said the strength of economy is, is crucial. Um, you've proposed big increases in military spending, a uh, tax cut that even with the most dynamic scoring will add to the deficit. Uh, I understand if you get 4% over time, that would reduce the deficit, but isn't there a danger that, uh, or how are you going to prevent increasing the debt, and isn't that a national security issue too? Fred, it is, and I'm glad you asked the question, uh, because I'm asked it a lot amongst real people, <laughs> which uh, is heartening, to be honest with you, that that actually is a concern in places like uh, Grinnell, Iowa, and uh, Manchester, New Hampshire. They're concerned about that. And here's how you do it. Growing at a faster rate yields significantly more revenue than growing at one and a half to two percent, which is the new normal. It lessens demands on government, which I think is important. Uh, but I've laid out detailed plans as it relates to spending as well. You can't do this simply by cutting taxes. The dynamic effect improves the revenue intake for sure with a growing economy, and it will put money in people's pockets, which needs to be the objective of an you know, of a, of a effective tax policy, and allows us to be competitive globally if, as it relates to the reforms of our uh, corporate tax uh, plan that I've laid out. But it's not enough to deal with the, uh, the looming deficit. So how would you do that? You challenge everything and, and, and increase spending, which, you know, based on the estimates of our team, is about 25 to $30 billion of additional spending per year. Uh, I, I've actually, I'm nerdy enough, wonky enough, that, that I've priced out every one of the things that we've proposed. And where you save the money is in entitlement reform. If you take Medicaid and you say to the states, no more mandates on how Medicaid needs to be administered, you get to do what every person in public policy world would love to have happen, which is to answer the following question. If we weren't doing it this way, how would we do it? And to create a 21st century Medicaid plan should not cost as much as it does today, would not have a pay and chase system, would not have fraud and abuse by all estimates over 10%. It would be a modern insurance plan that would empower people to make more choices at a lower cost. I would take that deal of a block grant at plus CPI than the Medicaid plan right now. Last year it grew at 18%. The average run rate over the next decade is probably 6 or 7%. Simply by block granting Medicaid to the states and allowing them to create a 21st century insurance plan for, for low-income people saves hundreds of billions of dollars. If you do the same thing as it relates to Social Security, which we have a, a plan that brings about solvency, and Medicare, you're, you're in the hunt. And then the final part of it is we need career civil service reform in Washington, D.C., and wherever possible, we need to shift power away from Washington, whether it's our, the student loan program, which I've proposed eliminating going forward and moving to an income repayment system that would, would, um, would save money and also take away power from Washington, D.C., uh, or a, uh, a welfare reform program that lifts people out of poverty as its objective rather than traps people. If you want to get people out of poverty to grow income, which the government then could, could receive the, uh, the receipts of, you need to promote marriage, promote work, and promote education. And you do that and provide support for people to be lifted up so that the mar highest marginal tax rate in this country right now is someone who's living at the poverty level and wants to rise up above it. The economics of that don't work. So why wouldn't we want to trans transform that? I've laid out a plan to do that. Block granting, TANF, food stamps and the housing assistance, putting it in one lump sum, and the federal government's role would be, what are your outcomes that you're expecting in return for the money that we're giving you and the freedom to be able to develop a 21st century plan? We don't have the luxury of having a 20, 20th century government on top of a 21st century world. And you know what? Some people love this stuff of challenging the orthodoxy of our times and challenging institutions that are broken. Some people cut and run. They just don't find it interesting. I love fixing things. I see a fire, I go to the fire. This is, this is why we reduce, our, the state of Florida and during my time as governor grew by, people voted with their feet. Three million more people lived in Florida than the day I started. And we reduced the government workforce by 13,000. Let me uh, let people get back to farm.